Well, good morning. Uh, so glad to have you uh, for our daily devotions and peace to the pandemic. And uh, to get things going this morning, um, I was considering a Facebook post. And it was a Facebook post that said, we are not in the same boat. Here are some of the words from the post. It said, we are in the same storm, but not in the same boat. Your ship could be shipwrecked and might not be or vice versa. For some, quarantine is optimal. A moment of reflection or reconnection. Easy in flip-flops with a cocktail or coffee. For others, this is a desperate financial and fam family crisis. For some that live alone, they're facing endless loneliness. While for others, it is for peace, rest and time with mother, father, sons and daughters. Isn't it true that during this time, we are not in the same boat? Some are having a very good time during COVID-19. Uh, some enjoy the lesser pace. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Sandy. And some are, are really struggling, wondering again how to make ends meet, wondering what to do with little ones at home. Uh, they're very different experiences. You know, I've always been a respecter of that. To know that anyone you meet might be going through a very tough season, even if they look like they're doing fine on the surface. In fact, many people have mastered the social mask that tells you I'm doing really, really fine, even though they could be going through a very critical and very dire season indeed. And so today we're, we're talking about a parable that gives us a view of two very different seasons of earthly life uh, for people. It's the parable of the rich man and poor Lazarus. And um, I, I love this one for a lot of different reasons, but this is how it starts out. It says, there is a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. Now, uh, here it, he had it really, really well. I was doing some research on how to make purple back in the day. And what you'd have to do is take a bunch of sea snails, boil them in a pot, and then um, the juices that would be uh, from them would be used to, to make the, the garment purple. Um, very, very expensive. It, it kind of reminds me of like when you could drive a normal car, but you choose to drive a car where the engine was hand built like a Ferrari or a Maybach or um, Bugatti. Like this is the rich man. And he had it good every day. That's what it says. That was his season on earth. Then it goes on and it says, At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores, longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. So it doesn't even say he did get to eat it. He just longed to eat the scraps. Uh, he was the modern day dumpster diver, hoping that there would be something good left over when the rich people were done. And the dogs came and they licked his sores. Now, what's really interesting is that uh, you should know it, it's not sinful to be rich. If right now God has blessed you with riches, uh, that is not a sin. Uh, but there are temptations, uh, for sure. Uh, God has reminded us we can't love both him and money. They can't both have the same top spot. Uh, so just beware. And Proverbs tells us of a temptation. Uh, Proverbs says, don't give me too much that I would disown you. Uh, so sometimes it can make us feel uh, prideful, as if we earned it all or got it all ourselves and don't need God. Regardless, uh, this was not about you know riches being sinful and being poor is better. No, this is just two different seasons, and God doesn't tell us why. But we do know that Lazarus had faith. In fact, some commentators say the reason we know his name is because he knew Jesus, uh, just like God knows our name, where we don't know the name of the rich man. But this is all we know about their season. And then it ends. And it goes on to say, The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And, and I guess one of the things I really love about this parable is that in three verses, it tells us about earthly life, but then for the rest, it tells us of eternal ramifications. And something I think you should know, good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Sandy. Something I think that we should all be real with is that life on earth is so short. I'm going to mow the lawn today. Today's my day off. And God says, that's your life. You're like the grass that is mowed one day and is gone the next. You're just not here very long. And yet, what we do on earth and the decisions we make on earth will have eternal ramifications. For example, uh, if you would spiritually boil down all of life, it, it boils down to a simple question, which is, do you believe in Jesus? Now, if your answer to that is yes, then for all of eternity, it's going to go really well for you. And if your answer for that is no, and if you've lost sight of Jesus, 
it's not going to go so well. The parable goes on and it says, So in hell, where the rich man was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Then he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue because I'm in the agony of fire. I don't know what your experience is with the knowledge of hell, but Jesus would teach about it often and say it was a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping because it's sad, gnashing of teeth for pain. Uh, It's a place that I don't want anyone to go to. Um, Jesus doesn't want anyone to go to. Uh, But this rich man is there and would like some comfort. And then we see Lazarus. Lazarus is by Abraham. And Abraham reminds the, the dichotomy between them. He said, son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things while Lazarus received bad things. Now he is comforted here and you are in agony. So what we have is this huge dichotomy of one who had a really good earthly life, but for all eternity it's hard. And one who had a really hard earthly life, but for all eternity it's amazing. Which would you prefer? Which, which would you say is the, the better way? Would you like to be the rich man who for a little time had some good? No, scripture is very clear in telling us you might be in a rough season and, and maybe you've had a hard life. Maybe when people look back on your life, uh, they're going to say the whole thing was a Lazarus type of life. But if you know Jesus... And simply have faith in him. I need to tell you for all of eternity, it can't possibly get better. It doesn't matter how much purple dye was available to the rich man. Your life will be better through faith in Jesus Christ for all of eternity. That's a fact. How wonderful. And so if this is a hard season, I need to tell you this season will not last forever. That for a believer again, uh, we will be with the Lord forever and how great that will be. It goes on. The rich man wanted a different way for his brothers. He said, I have five brothers. Send Lazarus to my father's house. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. The rich man who had such a great earthly life says, no, warn, warn the others of what's coming. I have family. Let them not make the same choice I made. I, I, I see clearly now. Please send someone. Send Lazarus. Maybe then they'll believe. In fact, it reminds me of certain conversations I have. You know, if if Jesus would just show up and give me a sign, if I could see him with my own eyes, if I was one of the first century disciples, then I'd really believe. But it's because I don't have those amazing things that I doubt. Well, God reminds us of the simple ways that he works in life. In fact, the response to the rich man is not that he was going to send Lazarus back, but this. He said, Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. Which is basically, they have the word of God, let the word do its work. And I think even of our church body, um, you know, there isn't anyone too famous in our church body that God is wowing you with. Um, God's plan all along was to use foolish things to shame the wise so that it would be apparent who gets the glory, that it would always be God. And so if you want to stay steady during the season, this parable is telling us of the reminder, hear the word. Be content with the simple way that God works. Worship online and and read your Bible and, and, and get to know who God is. And then regardless of how long this hard season will last, forever and ever, it will go well with you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that we know you and and, and that you also know our name. Lord, I pray for those who are in an especially rough season, for those who don't have enough food, who don't have enough money, uh, who are fearful for the future. I pray for those who are sick right now, for those who are lonely right now. I, I pray that you would show up and that you would comfort them in the midst of their hard season. But Lord, I also pray that if we're in good seasons, we would not lose sight of our need for you, not lose sight in and disown you so that we can be with you someday where Lazarus is, where Jesus is. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us for this devotion today. Uh, We're going to do a whole week of parables, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.